um, all these people on the stage, they had all of this music that they, that they had to learn. And I think there was some nervousness about the amount of rehearsal. So of course, to uh, allay their fears a little bit, I added three pieces to the program. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's only right. Uh, uh, you know. Well, the nice thing about that, of course, is that, that, that this group can handle it. <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, they, they, they looked at me like, okay, we're going to do this. Fine. And um, worked so very hard on all of this literature for a long time. Uh, you know, 10 hours is a long time to sing. Uh, that, that was yesterday. Um, so I, uh, I, I wanted to bring a little bit of... of what, what we do up in Grand Rapids, uh, back to my hometown, to Clinton. Um, I'm, in, in addition to being a, a teacher and a director up in Grand Rapids, I also write music uh, on the side. And I've been doing that with, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my fan. Uh, <laughs> uh, 23 years ago now, I uh, met uh, a man by the name of Paul Caldwell, who came to become the new artistic director at a place where I was already hired to be the accompanist. Right out of college, I got this job. And um, he showed up, and we said hi. Uh, he said, hi, I'm Paul. I said, hi, I'm Sean. And uh, for that first year, we just sort of discovered that over the course of time that we really enjoyed working together. And um, we also um, would go to like the music store do you remember what that was? There aren't that many around him. It's all online now, of course. But you used to have to go to a place to look at music in bins on the floor. And uh, uh, we would go to the local place and, and look at music for the, for the upcoming concerts. And, you know, more often than not, we would be like, no, 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 no. It was just, we didn't find anything we really liked. So we decided one Christmas we would um, teach the kids something. And uh, that, that we sort of just came up with. And so we started by teaching the word, the, the uh, notes by rote to the kids, part by part. And we would add a little more each week to the, to the song and a little more. And then um, by, by that time we had a, a few verses of this piece. And then we had no idea how we were, we were going to end it. And meanwhile, I'm sort of making stuff, stuff up at the piano. And... Um, we had no idea how we were going to end it, so we came up with three possible endings, and we taught it to the kids, one rehearsal, all three of them, and then they voted on which one they liked the best. And so we presented that in our, at our, the concert in December at this uh, uh, music uh, hall where we did our concerts, and um, a guy by the name of Anton Armstrong, who was a conductor at St. Olaf, heard a tape, cassette tape of the, of the concert. Um, <laughs> and called us and said, well, I really want to do that arrangement at an American Choral Directors Association convention. And we're like, but there's nothing to see. It's just, we taught it by road. It's just nothing there. There's no music or anything. He said, well, do you think you could write it down? <laughs> so, and then he sicked a publisher on us. And so we had to write it out, like uh, with pen and paper, and sent it in. And that became our first published piece called Go or Ascending. And a lot of people have done it since then. Um, one of the pieces we did in that early time was we wanted to teach uh, our choir members about what was happening in South Africa. We wanted to, we really wanted to teach our kids about world events through music. And so one of the places we really felt passionately about was South Africa. Uh, Nelson Mandela had recently been uh, released from prison and within a couple of years he had been elected the president of South Africa. And we thought that that was a pretty momentous event, and you know, not many people know, knew that at the time, because it's happened all the way on the other side of the world, but we thought that it was very important. And what we felt was even more important was the fact that when Mandela came to power, rather than um, seek revenge against the people who had oppressed the black population for so long in South Africa, he sought to create um, a, an atmosphere of reconciliation in that country where uh, whites and blacks would come together and air their differences and there would be forgiveness among the, the people. And of course, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful idea, but to a, a large degree that did play out in South Africa and um, we still see that uh, today. So we, that was an important event. So we wanted to teach our kids, how would you teach that with music? So we decided to take a, uh, a chant 
from South Africa's white culture of the Father's love begotten, the Divinum Mysterium, that's an ancient title for it, uh, which is from a European white culture, and then combine it with uh, a South African freedom song called Tula Siswe. And what we do is we present each idea separately, and then we present them together at the end of the piece to show just to show to our kids and to our audiences alike that when we when we work together, we are much better than the sum of the parts. We we can create something that's bigger than ourselves and that's more important than our individual differences. And so we created this piece called Hope for Resolution. The subtitle is A Song for Mandela and de Klerk. De Klerk was the uh, white uh, president of South Africa before Mandela and then became part of Mandela's cabinet. All right, so enough explanation. Here is Hope for Resolution, a song from Mandela and Dickler. Oh yeah, and my wife, Leah. Um, yes. Leah and I are not only married, but we also work together a lot. Um, she's my accompanist for the youth choruses and my assistant director, and much more organized than I am. Uh, but she also has a, has a... Did she just nod? Because I feel, I feel like she nodded. Okay. <laughs> um, we went to Ghana in 2006 in West Africa and came back with a djembe, a drum. And ever since then, Leah has been studying West African rhythms and uh, tech, West African drumming technique. It's become a real passion for her. So she teaches that up in Grand Rapids. And we're, she's going to play uh, djembe on this piece for you now. <laughs> 